the pressure is starting to mount. Lopetegui, you know, he's under a bit of scrutiny and now he needs to go and do what no West Ham manager has done in the Premier League and that is win a game against Brentford at their own ground. Joining me tonight in a big match preview is Ryan. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm all good, mate. I'm all good. I'm still trying to get over the last week in the West Ham world. Uh, obviously, the Chelsea defeat. And then, once again, 5-1 um, defeat at Anfield in the uh, Carabao Cup two seasons in a row. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, this is the thing, mate. And I know people are going to sit there and criticise because I'm saying the pressure's mounting. But... Yeah, it's not looking good at the moment. One win, one win, or like two wins if you count the cup game against Bournemouth so far this season. You know, we're not really seeing, um, for me personally, I'm not seeing a massive difference from the team we, from the, the performances of last season. You know, I think, like you said, last night put a, probably shine a light on it. The fact that it was the same result and probably against the weaker Liverpool side. Yeah, I mean, look, if you look at last season's defeat at Anfield and last night's defeat at Anfield, it was it was two totally different games. I mean, VAR was involved. It, it could have been a different game last night. Yeah. You know, we could have had their, their first goal was offside. We had a couple of penalty shouts, you know, but look, I'm not going to sit here and, and use that as excuses. After, I think after the Alvarez sending off, which was stupid from him, really, he had no need to put that tackle in. Most Salah weren't going anywhere. Um, and and now he misses this league mm -hmm. game against Brentford, and it's it's a massive blow for him to be missing out. But then again, sometimes it could be a blessing in disguise because he hasn't been that great. Right. Um, last night, you know, as I said, there weren't really any standout performers. You know, I think the first half we played all right was in the game, and then once they got that second goal straight after half time, you could just see. It seems like when we go behind in games this season, our reds just drop, and we've got no fight, and we've got. And that's a worrying thing. And, and, and I agree, Lopetegui is under pressure. And the next two games, Brentford at Ipswich, you know, he has to get a minimum four points out of yeah. them two games. Yeah. Because then we've got Tottenham, Man United, you know, we've got some difficult games coming up. So this is a, I'd say this is a must win on, on Saturday. Mate, the thing is, I'm with you. Look, Brentford ain't pulling up any trees, you know. They're going to be looking at us as this This is a winnable game and, and exactly the same as we have to, as well as Ipswich when we approach that, you know. The, the worrying factor is the defence does not seem any better. Like you said, we seem to go, when we concede a goal, you know, we seem to lack, we've lost that fighting spirit, you know, the spirit that we did have where we go a goal down and we don't know where we've beaten. We lost that last season and I think we've also lost that this season. And there's, there's a few players out there Season players in the West Ham side that for me are passengers at the moment and need to stick their head above the parapet and start putting some performances in. And for me, one of them's the captain. You know, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the leadership that I want to see from Jared. I, I want him to show a bit more. You know, for me personally, yeah. You know, when when you look at look at the other night, you know, Kudus is our shining light. Kudus is the one that's trying to that seems to be making things happen. And if we see it again this week, the fact that we're playing Bowen on the right and Kudus on the left, you know, Bowen's got to step up. I know he scored this season, but I want to see more from him. You know, that's me personally. I want to see more from him. Yeah, no, listen, mate, I totally agree. I don't think there's been any standout performers so no. far this season. You know, last night there were seven changes. There were seven players there that could had a chance to show Lopetegui I should be starting. But none of them, none of them really impress me. You know, I, I find that we haven't got a balance in our yeah. team. You know, yeah. the back four seems all over the place. The midfield, we, we ain't even got a centre mid because the pairings that we've gone with so far just haven't mm -hmm. worked. You know, you see the you see the game against Chelsea. They just run through us, cut us open, yeah. one pass, bang, one pass through, and and it took out the midfield and the back four. You know, there's a reason why we've conceded the most shots this season. Mm -hmm. Or you know, it's um. Yeah, I, I agree with you, mate. It's um, it's been a it's been a difficult start, but the good thing about football in the Premier League is that games come thick and fast, yeah. and we've got a chance this Saturday to go to Brentford and hopefully get three points. But we've never won there in the Premier League. We won there once in the FA Cup. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a. I mean, Brentford the last few weeks. I mean, they was unlucky against Man City. Mm -hmm. They lost two one. They was unlucky against Spurs last week. They scored two quick goals. Yeah. So we need to we've got to expect that Brentford are gonna come out of the, the you know, 
come out firing from the from the whistle. Yeah, and, and and this is the thing when you look back at that Chelsea game, you know how early we conceded in that game, and then how early we conceded in the second half. It seems to be we're not switching on from the start. You know, when when you go back to that that goal in the second half that Chelsea got that early goal that killed any fight back that we had. You know, we, we were on top leading into half time. We should have had a penalty. You know, Kudus obviously had the ball in the back of the net, but was offside. So we was improving. And then to come out and concede as early as we did in the second half, it just kills any momentum that we were trying to carry through. And like you said, the way we were carved open is far too easy. You know, again, players not stepping up, in my opinion. You know, I know to me, Lopetegui's still not got. The balance right. I don't think he knows what his strongest side is. Yeah, I think the Chelsea game has shone a light that there's only, there's certain games Rodriguez is not going to be up to the pacing and not going to be able to compete in. You know, against the midfield like Chelsea's, I expected more from him with the, with the type of player that he is. But you know, it it it, it showed and it for me. We now need to go back to basics. The key thing for us now is not to concede, not to concede, and not to concede early. Yeah, I mean, look, we've conceded a lot of goals in, in 2024. I think we're like right up the top of the list for conceding the most mm-hmm. goals. Um, we struggled last season. We brought in, um, obviously, Kilman, Tadebo, Wambazaka. You know, we've added quality to the to the defence, but it still looks leaky. Mm-hmm. That comes down to sort of Areola as well. He hasn't been great this season. Fabianski last night, I mean, their equaliser, he got he got out-jumped by Diego John. I mean, how does that even exactly. happen? I, I just, there's just something not right at West Ham at the moment. There's something not clicking. Um, but look, in the previous games, Kudus against Chelsea ruled out for offside. Last night, Danny Ng scored, ruled out for offside. You know, sometimes you just need that little bit of luck, mm. you know. And goals and moments can change yep. games and change the course of the season. So we're not out of it yet. You know, we're on four points. Brentford are on six or yep. seven, I believe. Yeah, uh, seven, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've won two games this season so far. Um, I think they're unbeaten at home. We're unbeaten away so far this season. So, yeah, it's got draw written all over <laughs> this game, really, for me. But, but to be honest, mate, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take a draw. Yeah, I'd even take a nil-nil, you know, try and get some confidence. As I said, back to basics. Concentrate on getting a clean sheet and then start building from there. You know, we like you said, we've conceded a lot of goals. And look, I know I'm probably victimising Bowen a little bit because there is a lot of other players that need to show up. Like you said, when you look at Alvarez, he's not so well to like this season. He gives he too many silly free kicks, silly bookings that he keeps picking up. And this yeah. is why he keeps getting suspended. You know, he's another one that's got to look at yourself. But, you know, it, it, what worries me at the moment is we go forward. And, okay, we've had goals ruled out for, for decisions, but I don't ever feel like, I don't feel confident we're going to score. Do you know what I mean? It, it, with the talented players yeah. that we've got going forward, we should be a major goal threat. I, I said this last week, like... The defeat against Chelsea has been coming this season. We've we've rode our luck in in a few games this season. I mean, Aston Villa first game of the season, yeah, it was entertaining. Uh, you know, and we lost two one. Duran scored a last minute goal, or not last minute, but like whenever he got the winner. Yeah. But we could have been two or three down in that game before we equalised. Then you move on to uh, the Palace game. I know we won two 0 but you go back to that game. Palace had chances. You know, on another day they take their chances. We have rolled our luck. And that Chelsea defeat has been coming. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, you know, it might sort of wake a few of these players up. But when I watched some of them last night, I don't know. It's just, And I agree with you about Jared Bowen. I mean, I haven't... I love Jared Bowen. He's a, he's a, he's a le- legend at the football yeah. club for what he's done for us. And, 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 and I think just giving him that armband has put more pressure on yeah, him. Yeah, I agree. And he feels that he, feels that he, he has to... Being not eight, nine out of ten, week in, week out, you know, and what's who's the first person most of the fans turn on? It's captain. If it's not the manager, it's yep. the captain, and that's what you don't want to see. No, I agree. Um, Listen, I, I know I've I've criticised him, and I'm just saying in my criticism, I want to see more from him. I want to see more of a leader from him. I, you know, I don't want to get on his back, but that's just how I feel. And like you said, he's the one on that pitch. The manager does what he does on the sideline, does what he does in the change room. 
on that pitch, he's the one that's got to lead by example. And I, that's what I want to see from him. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, well, Just good, a bit more. The good, yeah, the good thing is, Scott, is that Bowen loves playing against Brentford. He's got seven goals yeah. against them. He got a hat-trick against them last season. So, you know, this might be the game for him to, to get back on the score sheet and get a bit of confidence and have a good game. So, um, yeah, it's, as I said, mate, it's going to be a very difficult game. Mm. It's not a ground that we like going to. But, um, mate, it's a winnable game. This this is this is the thing about it. It is a winnable game, you know. And even in the last couple of games, there has been a few bright sparks. You know, Somerville, I think, um, is finding his feet at West Ham. He, he's looked exciting for me. I, I didn't see last night, so I don't know how well we played last night. But against Chelsea, I was really excited to see him. He tried to make things happen, so that's good. Hopefully, uh, full crew will be back uh, for this one. Whether he's fit enough to start will be a different story. But, you know, just getting these players back and... And, you know, building, going back to a basic side and, and going back to the start and, you know, trying to, to build from the back a bit. Make yourself a bit harder to 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 concede against. And then look at the likes yeah. of Kuda, Somerville, Bowens, you know, to, to, to make a bit of magic happen. I'll be honest with you, Scott. The only two bright sparks from last night, I'd say, is that Somerville had another good game, mm-hmm. I thought. You know, he looks comfortable on the ball, like taking people on. Another performance where you can see he's a bit lightweight and he gets knocked yeah. about a bit, but he draws in the fouls. And I thought when Antonio come on as well, he he changed the he changed our attack. Mm. He, he actually gave us something to, to chase. I mean, Danny Ings weren't that great last night. Danny Ings didn't do much no. wrong. But when Antonio come on, he worried the Liverpool defence. You could see they started making mistakes. Mm-hmm. And then we were still in the game. It was 2-1 at the time. And then once that third goal went in and then the sending off, it just it just yeah. killed anything yeah. uh, any chance of us getting back in. That's it, mate. The third goal and in the sending off, that was that was game over in this one. And you touched on Danny Ings there. I think again, I think he's just it's just a system, isn't it? It just doesn't he needs he needs to play up there with a partner. You know, he can't be up there by himself. He needs someone alongside him because he has probably been another bit of a bright spark so far this season. I said coming on, I think it was against um was it Villa? He looked. He looked lively. I think. Um, obviously, he got got the goal that he got as well in in the other game that he scored. So, do you know what I mean? It, it, he he warrants a start, but I just the system just doesn't suit him starting up now. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that the way most teams play now is one up top. It's rare you see two yeah. two up top, and and I think that's the way Lopetegui wants to set up. Um, listen, we'd love to have had full crew fully fit, you know, a couple of goals under his belt already, but he's obviously picked up an injury. I don't know if he's going to be back for the mm. game. And if he is, he'll probably be on the bench. I don't think he's going to be fully fit. I know he was touch and go whether he was going to be in the squad yeah. last night. Obviously wasn't. Not worth, Probably not worth risking taking him all the way out to Liverpool. You know, stay, stay at home, mm. do a little bit of gym work. And hopefully he will be back in the squad. But... Look, Brentford's not going to be an easy game, you know. That, as I said, the last couple of games, especially the Man City game, they they went up there and they they took it to Man City. And, and Brentford, they've got a good manager in Thomas Frank. Mm-hmm. You know, they play big football. They obviously lost Ivan Tony, uh, which was a big blow for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they've still got good players that that can hurt us. And it, it's a game that I agree with you. It's a game we can win if we're on it. We can win, but it's also a game that I look at and think. We're not on it. We could see another two, three, four nil defeat. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm with you, mate. I'm with you. Go, go looking at the game. What, what, what would you like to see from the starting eleven in this one? No, but the thing is, I've gone. Obviously, I'm going to put Ariola back in goal. He hasn't had a great season, but look, he is our number mm-hmm. one. Um, my back four. I've gone Wan Bissaka right back. Um, Emerson left back. I'm going to put Tadebo in alongside Kilman for this game, um, just because Mavropanos last week against Chelsea looked out of his depth. He, he looked all over the place. Um, and I just think that Tadebo and Kilman started together last night at Anfield. Um, I just think chuck him in now. Just just try to get mm-hmm. him in. And then in front of them, my midfield, um, obviously no Alvarez because of his suspension. So I've gone Suchek as a hold, holding midfielder. In front of them, I've gone for Salah and Paqueta. Mm-hmm. On the right, I've got Kudus. On the left, I've got Somerville and I've got Bowen up top. I'm for Bowen up top. Ooh. So, yeah. I think that Rodriguez, for me, last week, there's a reason why he got yeah. taken yeah. off for Suchek. Um, I, I just think with Suchek, I know he, he's not everyone's cup of tea and he's not 
But I just think his aerial threat might do well for us in this game, especially like with Kudas and Somerville whipping them balls in. We missed that last week. We see that, you know. But yeah, I've just gone for that. Soler, he didn't have a bad game last mm. night at Anfield. So I'd like to see that, just see what we can do. To be honest, Scott, I could probably sit here and I don't think most of these players deserve a, a start. <laughs> you know, no, it's, it's just what... I just think with no Alvarez, I just don't think Rod. I can't see Rodriguez, Soler, and Paqueta working together. I just think Suchek will just give it that little bit of balance. Yeah. And I can't believe I'm saying this because, yeah, it's just the mad one. So <laughs> I don't think people, many people, are going to vote for my team this <laughs> Mate, week. Scott. The thing is, when, when when you look at it, look, Suchek, you know what you get. You know what I mean? You know he's going to work his ass off. You know he's going to be an aerial threat. You know, you know, look. He was pinging passes when he came on against Chelsea, you know. So he, he has got it there sometimes, but more times than not, he's he's not. But mate, it's not much dissimilar. I'm I'm with you. I think now's the time that you can't. We we criticise Moyes for taking time to bed players in and give players game time. I think, like you said, you see Tadebo only come in last night. You know, in a way, it's a very very tough game to come into playing against Liverpool. No matter what type of Liverpool side it is, Liverpool always, as we know. You don't get many results up at Anfield against Liverpool, especially as a, as a West Ham. We've only had one one since nineteen sixty three. There you go. So so bringing him in, and, but I'm with you. You've got to build. You've got to build the partnership at some point. You know, we, we've not been great defensively, so now's the time to start building it. So let's look at that. The Emerson, Kilman, Tadebo, and Wembasaka back for. Uh, I'm with you. Bring Ariola back in goal. For me, this is where I go back to to what we know. My midfield two is going to be Suchek and Pakatar. In front of them, Kudus, Bowen on the right, Somerville on the left, and Antonio up front. Because, I, as I said, mate, I think it's time to go back to basics and 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 what we know and and we know what we can get with the players like that. You know, look, Pakatar's not great in that position where alongside a Suchek, but like I said, Suchek more holding. Pakatar can play in that position. He he, he did it before. Mm. Just get him on the ball, put a bit more work rate in him. Give Kudus that little bit of freedom. You know, I think Bowen offers a little more defensively and a little more defensive cover for Wamba Saka than what Kudus does. Kudus likes to stay a bit further forward. So putting Kudus in that 10, getting him up to support Antonio, but also looking at, 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 as a counter-attack threat. You know, when, when you look at that, you've got Somerville, who's a, who's a bit lively and a tricky player. Bowen, as I said, loves running at players. Kudas picking that ball up and, and having a drive. And then you've got to be wary of Antonio over the top, playing on the shoulder of the last defender. The only thing I don't want to see from Antonio is him drifting out to the left like he seems to do quite a lot. We need him to stay central. We need him to be in, in the middle and be a, you know the, the, the pinnacle of our threat going forward. So that's, that's what I go for for this one. Looking at the teams, the one I first picked weren't too dissimilar mm. to that. I... The reason why I haven't gone with Antonio as a starter for me, because I see what he done at Anfield last night. And when he come off the bench, he looked lively. Yeah. And I think if we have that, if we're in the game against Brentford and he comes on and we need a goal or, you know, I, I think that that's his best position this season. He's coming off the bench. But yeah, I mean, look, both both teams, I think, could give Brentford a game. We hope they give Brentford yeah. a game and we hope they get us. All three points, mate. As I said, I, I think I think these two defeats now. I think that, you know the Chelsea Liverpool both both games conceding eight goals. That's the kick up the arse the players need for me, and that's the kick up the arse the manager needs to to get it right. And I like him with his substitutions. I like that he's he's proactive instead of being reactive. You know, I like that he sees things and tries to change it, no matter how early it is. So look, if he needs to do it again in this game, then then he needs to go out there and do it. But look. We got back in. We got back the team, and and let's hope that they go there and get us a decent result. Yeah, and I agree, mate. And and it's a big couple of weeks coming up with Brentford and obviously Ipswich at home. I mean, if we lose these next two games, yeah, yeah, That's it. it could be uh, yeah, it could be night night. Lock yeah, mate. I think, like you said earlier on in the show, four points from these two games, I think, is a good, a good like um. A good good number of points to get from you know Brentford's always tricky and and Ipswich is look they're going to be up for it but we need to pick up results and now's the time to start doing yeah. it. Yeah, positive vibes. Let's hope that Lopetegui starts. Um, you know because he's he's not a bad yeah, manager. He's it hasn't it hasn't gone well for mm. him. You know when you come into a new club, you know especially with our fan base, 
you know, sometimes they're going to be difficult. So to hit the ground running straight away, he, he would love to have done that. He'd love to have three or four yeah. wins under his belt this season. And we're up in the, the, like, this time last year when we was, like, sitting second or third in the league and it all went well. <laughs> but look, that's football. Exactly. Right. But let's hope. Come on, come on, Lopetegui. We're going to win this weekend. That's it, mate. That's it. But right, as usual, thank you. It's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you for joining me. What's your score predictions? Oh, score predictions. Yes, I did do the other day. So, yeah, score predictions. Go on, mate. What are you going for? Well, I've said that we're going to get the win, but I, I'm... I'm I'm sitting with a one-all draw. I, I I just think that as much as I want to say we're going to win, I, I'm going to go for one-all. I'm going to. Go, I, I think there'll be be a tight game, and I and I, I'll, I'll be happy with a point at Brentford. Do you know, do you know what I was going to say? One-all. So because you've said it, I'm going to go two-all. <laughs> sitting oh. on the fence, yo. Know, I, 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 oh. I'm going to change my mind and go three-all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think I'll be happy with a draw in this one. Yeah, it'd be fantastic to get a win in the clean sheet, but I'll be happy with a draw. So. Well, Baby steps. Scott, I, I, hope, I hope we're both wrong, mate, and we get them free exactly, points. Exactly, mate, exactly. But as I said, well, thank you very much for joining me. Been a pleasure as usual, Don. We are coming thick and fast with the videos. Uh, this will probably be going out on Friday morning. We're recording this on Thursday night, so make sure you check out Friday Night Pint. We'll be on myself. Ryan, right, you there tomorrow, mate? Uh, yes. yes, we're, we're, we're there yes, tomorrow I'm night. Uh, we'll have all the build-up in and around the Brentford game. Nicky will probably be there with the fan cams afterwards, and there should be a post-match point. And I will be back for the preview again leading up to the Ipswich game next week. But as per usual, mate, one thing left to say, come on, you on, man. Come on, you on,